SpaceX successfully landing its Starship rocket yesterday, marking a milestone for the company. Our next guest calling it one of the most important moments in space history. For more, we're bringing in Rick Tumlinson, founder of Space Fun. Rick, it is great to see you. So let's start right there, Rick. You know, we all watched SpaceX over this weekend, and I did see you post on X, Rick. You said, listen, this is a historic moment. How come? Walk us through it, Rick. What we're witnessing here is, uh, and thank you for having me, is, um, you know, it's sort of the combination of the the railroads, the steamships, airplanes, all in one. Like in 100 years from now, people are going to look back at this period of time um, as sort of when humanity breaks out into space. I don't know if you're a Star Trek fan, but this is when the Vulcans start looking at us and go, hey, maybe they should join the Federation, right? Uh, what I mean by that is the idea of reusability um, is critical to what it is um, we want to do in space. What you just witnessed was the equivalent of a skyscraper with a smaller skyscraper on top of it, fly to space, launch the smaller skyscraper, fly back down and get captured by two pairs of giant chopsticks. It's reusability. The fact that this happened almost begins to make every other rocket on the planet obsolete. And so now what, Rick? What, what does come next? Well, they're going to do a bunch more flights. You know, I've, I've, I've been down there uh, where they launched this thing and the little Starship vehicle that was on top. Last time I was down there were like seven more of those. Um, and their, their approach is to build it, break it, learn from it, build it again. So whenever your, your viewers see these things blow up, understand that what they're doing, what they say in space is we got good data. They're going to learn more. They're going to get better at it. Uh, Elon will probably then take that once it's starting to fly or SpaceX will. They'll probably start flying their, uh, you know, their communication satellites, their Starlinks. Um, then if it blows up, it's not a problem. They'll get good at it, develop what we call a heritage. Um, and then they'll be able to start getting into more complex payloads. One of the other big things is they need to be able to refuel in space to be able to go to the destinations like the moon or Mars. Who would you um, argue, Rick, poses potential competitive risk to Musk at this point, in either U.S. or Europe, or both? Um, not so much Europe. In the U.S., it would be Blue Origin, which is Jeff Bezos' company. He's been moving slow but steady. Uh, he's coming up. Uh, there's a guy named Peter Beck and his company Rocket Lab, um, which is not a billionaire-financed company. Uh, they're coming up really fast. Uh, Peter comes from New Zealand. He was a dishwasher, worked his way into the field. Uh, there's an American company called Firefly here in Texas. There are a bunch of them rolling up. And then there's China. China has, at last count, roughly four companies that are working on reusability right now. So they're coming up fast. You know, venture investors, Rick, are much more interested in this space now, excited about this space. I'm curious, how much, how much credit do you give Elon Musk for that? I give him a lot of credit. He, you know, he's, um, he's a, he came in with his goals. Single-handedly, he wants to go to Mars and get people there. And he is very obsessed and driven by that goal. Um, whereas the aerospace industry is like, you know, don't rock the boat, keep the money coming, you know, don't do anything too radical. And so what he's shown us is that just by, remember the old Apple commercial, thinking differently, you could do something that's incredible. Um, but again, I, the entire community that I know of, the commercial community, the, the, uh, the private enterprise, we're moving in that direction, all of us. So once we get past there, Robert Heinlein, the old science fiction writer said, if you, you know, once you make it to orbit, you're halfway to anywhere. So this is the big one. We get this working the entire solar system opens up. And finally, Rick, what about these headlines? I saw reports that California rejecting bids for, for more frequent SpaceX, launch, SpaceX launches. I'm curious what you made of those reports. How much you think that was, that was some type of um, criticism of Musk himself went into that decision making? Yeah, that's a touchy topic. Um, you know, I, I personally don't, I don't share many of his political views right now, uh, but he is a friend. And um, I think that that's a challenge. It's a real challenge. I, I when he just took over Twitter, I uh, tweeted at him before it became X. And I said, dude, you just got one job and that's get us off the planet. A thousand years from now, that's all anybody's gonna care about. Did you get us off the planet and break us out? Uh, we need to see that happen. And we need politics on both sides to get out of the equation, both sides. Let's just go. 
Rick, great to have you on the show. Thank you so Thank much you for joining sir. us and your perspective. Appreciate it.